Magnetism is a major branch of physics, and this chapter is just a simple introduction to magnetism in which I will illustrate a few problems which will help you when you do the problems in the back of the chapter. Supposing I take an iron rod, and then I take and wrap wire around it, and then I connect it to a source of DC current. And we say that a DC current will induce a magnetic field in the iron, that the magnetic field is called flux, and the flux consists of many, many lines of force. The force of the magnetic field is called magnetomotive force, and it depends on the number of windings that we wrap around the iron and the amount of current that we are feeding through the windings. Suppose that we have 200 turns of wire around the iron and that we have a DC current of 200 milliamps, then the magnetomotive force is calculated by saying that it is 200 turns times 200 milliamps, and this equals 40 amp turns. Let's say that our, our iron is 7 centimeters long, and in dealing with these sort of calculations, that we always have to convert to meters. So in this case, the iron is 0.7 meters in length. The field intensity is called the H field, and it depends on length because the longer the lines of force have to travel from the north to the south, then of course they're going to lose intensity. We can calculate the field intensity by saying that H is equal to magnetomotive force divided by length. In this case, 40 amp turns divided by 0.7 meters, which equals 571 amp turns per meter. Notice the odd units. Some other books use different names for these things, but we're going to call it amp turns per meter. It seems that in the case of magnetism, that the shorter the magnet, the better, because then we don't lose field intensity. Let's say that our bar magnet, which we have created, has a cross-sectional area that is round and has an area of 0 0.004 meters square. And let's also say that the flux we have created, we can measure to be 250 microwebers. A Weber is 10 to the eighth lines of force, which is a huge number of lines of force. So most of the time, in practical electronics, we're dealing with millivebers or even microwebers, as in this example. The flux density describes how well the lines of force are packed together, and it's called the B field. We can calculate the flux density B by saying that B equals flux divided by area. In this case, 250 microwebers divided by 0 0.004 square meters, and that equals 0 0.0625 teslas. Notice we could have said Weber per square meters, but we're going to call them Tesla in honor of the great Nikola Tesla. What we learn from this example is that the skinnier the bar magnet, then the tighter will be the lines of force, and therefore the flux density will be higher. When we first apply current to our windings, which are wrapped around the iron, we find that the iron does not want to become magnetized. And this opposition to magnetism is called reluctance, and it's very similar to resistance in electricity. We can calculate reluctance by saying it is magnetomotive force divided by flux. And remember, we had calculated magnetomotive force from an earlier problem. So in this case, it's 40 amp turns divided by 250 microweber, which equals 160,000 amp turns per Weber. Notice that the reluctance is a big number, which means that this metal does not want to become magnetized. And then the opposite occurs when we want to demagnetize it, it will also oppose the change. How well a material can be magnetized is called permeability. And the reference for permeability is air. Imagine that we have a cardboard tube, and inside the cardboard tube is nothing but air. Now, if we try to magnetize it, we find that, that the permeability of air is 1.26 times 10 to the negative 6 power Weber per meter amp turns. This is a very, very small number, and it simply means that it is very difficult to magnetize free air. Now, I imagine that we take that same cardboard tube, and this time we insert iron. And now we want to magnetize the same cardboard tube that now contains iron, 
and we find that the permeability is now called the relative permeability, and it equals 500. And what this means is that the permeability is now 500 times the original permeability of air, which means that iron can be magnetized 500 times easier than air. Once again, be sure to read the entire chapter. It's very interesting, and do the problems. They're not exactly what I demonstrated, but very similar.